Um, my name is Dai Tsutsumi. I'm the director and creator of Oni Thunder God's Tale. And so your um, company is ton Tonka House? Tonko House, yeah. What is that new Tonko So uh, in Japanese, it means pig and fox. And our debut film, a short film, is called The Dam Keeper. And the main characters are pig and fox. Ah, it's so cute. Thank you. I saw a little bit of it. Um, so of all the, the Japanese folklore, why is Oni first? So Oni in a traditional Japanese folklore is always the villain character. And there was an interesting historical theory that Oni might have been the description of people who look different. Because, you know, when you see somebody who doesn't look like you, you get scared and then you make him bad, bad guys. I thought that was really interesting and I thought that was so current to what's happening today, you know, the in the world we live in, and I felt the story should be told through this folklore-inspired story to the people today. And I thought it'd be really interesting and hopefully inspire kids around the world to, you know, to embrace who they are, you know, and not necessarily judge based on what they look like, what others might judge them. Hi, I'm Mamona Tamata, and I play Onari in Oni. So who is Onari? Onari is a really free-spirited gal. I think she's still discovering who she is, but she, you know, she's very determined, head forward, and also really brave, I would say. Definitely an inspiration to me. <laughs> Did you have any say in choosing her to do Onari? Oh, I would say in the end, no, because she was amazing, even in the audition, that there was nobody else we could think of after we heard she read the, uh, the you know, test, test line. You. Seriously. So, so we had no choice. Like, we had no say. <laughs> yeah. Were you familiar with, like, only folklore before doing the character? Yeah, I mean, growing up, my parents were always like using kind of the folklore of the Oni to, you know, add just a little bit of excitement into my childhood, I would say. So I was very familiar. Um, and when I had the meeting with Dice, just kind of hearing this like world that they had built, I was just so, so like, oh my gosh, I was so impressed. And I, I knew that I had to be a part of this film for sure. And you mentioned in an interview that you want the stories of Japanese folklore for the American audience from a Japanese perspective. What would be like the difference for that? Like, why is it, I mean, obviously, but like for you, like, what do you want to bring to the American audience? I think, uh, you know, today, I think we live in a diverse world and, you know, it's so important that the stories are told through different perspectives, you know, uh, even if it's the same story, it might come out differently if it's through a different voices. And I just don't think there's enough uh, out there through authentic Asian voices yet. And I know it's happening more and more, which is really exciting. And then, um, I haven't seen it yet, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you gonna hope to add other kind of creatures, uh, folklore stories that American audiences might not have known? That would be amazing, yeah. I mean, there's so many of them in Japanese folklore. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then just for you, for the acting process, was there anything during the voice acting you were like, having so much fun with that's so memorable to you when you think back? Oh, honestly, everything was so fun. Um, Dice really let me kind of experiment and really like we, we I think, worked together to kind of find Onari's voice. Um, so all of it for me was just so fun. And then just kind of final question, how excited are you to be here tonight? for the opening night of Wendell and Lyle. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, like words can't describe. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We're here to really support the community of animation because animation should be considered a film. Uh, Kane Lee, executive producer. Sarah Sampson, producer. Uh, Robert Kondo, executive producer and uh, production designer. And voice, oh, and voice right. Talent. Yeah. Which voice are you? <laughs> I'm Nama and Hage, the, the bully. Dice, uh, they casted me as a bully. Look at him. I got bullied into this position. Yeah. <laughs> and just a quick question. Um, production must be always fun for animation. Was there anything like super interesting, unique for this project because it's Japanese folklore? 
And I'm just gonna say, just look at it. I don't think you've ever seen anything that looks like. Just look at it. Just look at it. No, yeah. I mean, if, when you watch it, hopefully you can see that we were deeply inspired by beautiful stop motion craft. Um, this film is 100% CG though. So one unique factor is that our animation is 12 frames per second. So we worked hard to really establish that golden pose and let our animators run with it. So. Which actually, I'm just curious, why go through all that for stop motion instead of doing the stop motion, out of curiosity? Well, you know, stop ma motion is, the original hope was to do it in, in stop motion. And so we did an experiment with Dwarf Animation Studios based out of Japan, best animation studio in stop motion. And uh, we did some tests and we fell in love with those tests. But as we crafted the story, and put things together, it grew, and it got bigger and bigger, and it just sort of grew out of the scope of what made sense and what was comfortable for us. We all come from CG animation. We're all sort of former Pixar uh, artists, and so we leaned into what we knew, which is CG, And but we always loved the feeling that we caught in that test, and so that became our high watermark for, for the standard of the look. Thank you so much, Rance. I was so curious about that.